I always loved the look of professional cards. They like no frills. I really like the minimalistic design. Uh, I find the single slot cards to be extremely sexy, but that's just me, I guess. Um, so here we are with four different graphic cards that you can consider for Hackintosh, and we will talk about them. Uh, with the pros and the cons, uh, talk a little bit about the benchmarks because uh, uh, we all know that the GPU situation on the market is getting better but it's still very hard to find like good budget options uh, if you want to build a Hackintosh for music production for example or you just want a couple of display outs and your iGPU doesn't take it or you maybe want to build a, a system based on a new like uh, B660 like Elder Lake and Underlay just doesn't have an iGPU and so you're forced to, to get a graphic card even if you really don't need that for any home usage and like enough uh, view store w store as dos sk sk uh, has a very good offer for those professional graphics card and we will see we'll try to get them working with the hackintosh we'll see the performance these are the professional cards. This one is a Radeon MI8, and I cannot test it on this system right now because this doesn't support Secure Boot, so it will not boot on my Gigabyte B660. I had more luck with the MSI board, but I'm not. I don't have any Hackintosh ready with that. But I did some testing with other systems before in the past, and I can explain something about this also. And this is like a baseline um, RX 560 or 460. I don't even remember now. Um, it's just like a used card you can get from eBay, and this card was the same price as this one. But this one comes brand new, has double the RAM, and almost double the shaders. So we'll see. On the website, where we can buy those cards, and we will provide a, a discount code for the purchase of these cards in, uh, in Europe. And of course, the, all those uh, considerations are valid for brand new cards or used one on eBay, but these are not very easy to come by unlike the RX 460 which is very easy to find but it has the same price uh, and you're gonna find them individually one one by one and they don't come new they they are double the size double slots so it's a different I, I don't like this uh, I, I'd rather get a new one from here and as we will see, the WX5100 is much more powerful and at the same price. So, in this video we're not going to talk about the 7100 because this one will be covered by a friend of us, uh, Sad Detach. He also tried that with Akintosh and I can confirm it works perfectly. Uh, so you, you, you can watch his video about this in Italian probably. Coming soon. So, let's start with the touch specs of those cards. This is the RX 460, it's uh, like the baseline Polaris. There is also a 450 or a 550, but that is not that easy to get working on Hackintosh. Um, you can usually like fake fake the ID to the RX 460 and get it working. But we're talking about like all of the other cards work uh, plug and play, so that's it. And this first iteration of this card was like uh, usually 2 gigabyte and has like um, 800 shaders where are these here it is 800 shading units 900 actually and I actually tested the 4 gigabyte version of this card with a slight overclock from gigabyte but that doesn't matter that much then we have the WX4100 so apparently this one has like the full unlocked buffing core so it's much more similar to the 560. There are also some 560s that actually came with the 900 cores, so that's that's not really... I mean, that's not the point of this card. You don't get this card for the performance, you get it because you want some display outputs. And this card has like a DVI, HDMI, and one display port, while this one has four mini display port. Now the VUX 4100 uh, doesn't come with a, with a full-size PCI bracket, so I had to take it out, take the the small four-factor bracket out to test it. Keep in mind that both these cards have like, you can see the, the boost clocks 
are quite high, around 1,200 like megahertz. And that's important because now we are moving to the WS500-100, and this one is actually like um, RX570 or 470, whatever, based on the number of cores. So the cores, the core is much bigger. It has double the amount of RAM, but the frequency is just much lower. And in my testing with Windows, uh, it actually usually runs at the base clock. So this is going to come into play lately with the testing. And then we have the Radeon Instant Mi 8, which is a totally different card. This one is much older. The Mi 8 is like a Radeon Fury Nano. It has HBM memory, has only 4 gigabytes of that, but that's like screaming fast memory. So um, I will talk about this card uh, in like in the notes because I didn't have the possibility to test it as as mentioned before. I couldn't get it to get this to boot with the gigabyte board. So let's start with uh, the like basic consideration. Why should I should we do this? Um, we should do this because uh, Polaris is the like the oldest architecture that actually has. Uh, video encoding and decoding support on macOS because you can also get like a, a very cheap like GT 710, 710 something like that and this will work somehow you can get it working with Monterey with some patching but this car doesn't have any encoders inside so all the video will be played by the CPU and this is terrible for performance even for like a home usage so you don't want this okay what happens when you test the WX 7000, like 5100, for example? You get this. This is what you get. You get full encoding support. This is like the OpenCL score of this card, and you can see that it's a very good score. Gbench 5. So, here we have the Gbench 5. Uh, I'm sorry about this. Of the doesn't I, I cannot save this in a um, graphical manner. This is the Gigabyte Five test of the WX uh, Five Thousand One Hundred, as you can see. While here we have the the, the Gigabyte score for the um, RX Four Sixty. As you can see, it's much lower. Like it's around thirty percent lower. Even though both cards have the same uh, power draw because they are both using. Uh, only the PCI slot power. All of these of these three cards are only powered by the PCI Express slot. So they are actually like the whole board cannot exceed 70 watt, uh, which is like a safety me measure. Um, actually, this card can be overclocked by rising the power limit. You will actually exceed the spe specification for the PCI Express slot. So it comes at your risk, but will increase the performance dramatically. And we'll see now something happening with those cards. Lucky, uh, with the Inigi in Heaven benchmark, you can have like the, the perfect graphics representation of the, of the score. And here we can see that the RX460 is actually scoring 34 FPS medium. The RX WX4100 is scoring 41, but Oh my god, the WS5100 is only scoring 26, so why is that so? The basic explanation of this is that uh, Unigine Heaven is a very like old and very like light, lo light load on the, on the card, and it will stress the frequency much more. It will, it's, it's also like much more, uh, like I would say it's very narrow, like it doesn't use the full shader configuration of the card, so that's why with uh, with the WX5100, which has like double the amount of shaders, but a lot less frequency, you get a lower score. And this is the contrary of the Gigabench score. With the Gigabench score, you will you you have seen that the the bigger card, the wider card, gets a much better score. And we are talking about the same power, so that's a very important. Uh, consideration to, to, to make. And it's not about the, the frame buffer. Some, some Someone might think that this is uh, a result of the card having 8 gigabytes of RAM, but it's not that. So, there are different cards. Uh, 
none of these cards, uh, apart from like, like a style of the MI8, are good for like graphic intensive applications. But uh, if you have to choose, like this one is much better for again graphical intensive computation, while this one is much better for gaming, if you can say so. And back to the, to the to the point that I made before, if you unlock this card, you will get much much higher performance even in 3D, because you can get it like to use a, a 80 watts. It's only 10 watts more than the the specification of the PCI Express bus, but the performance will rise dramatically. Uh, sadly, I cannot show you this because uh, again with the gigabyte board, I am not able to boot those cards, even with the legacy mode enabled, like with CSM. And um, yeah, so let's let's talk about the the other two cards that I didn't test. So the MI8, I tested this with a, a, a Coffee Lake system before, and it's very important because this card doesn't have encoding support on macOS. There is no way to get the VCI encoder, like the integrated encoder of this card working with macOS, so you have to get QuickSync. And it's very important because if you don't have a, an integrated GPU with QuickSync, this card will not work for video editing. It's a very good gaming, gaming card. It's a very good gaming card for high refresh rate because it has like only four gigs of RAM, so you can you cannot like get high details, but it has like a massive core with a massively huge bandwidth. So this card has like incredible compute power. It's uh, like more powerful than a 590. It's like like between a 590 and a Vega 56. So this is a very good card for like DaVinci Resolve if you don't work at high resolution because the, the, the core power is just amazing. But um, it doesn't have encoder support which is something that you really need if you want to build a computer with uh, for example uh, X99 or Alder Lake or God forbid you X299 you don't want to build that but if you really want those cards have the encoder the WX while the MI8 doesn't and the last card I need to talk about uh, which it will be mentioned by my friend is the WX7100 and because this is basically our RX 480 so there's really no point of talking about that it has like a CPU power here and Sorry, a PCI Express power here, so it's like a normal graphic card. It just singles a lot. It's like a slightly lower power consumption than a 480, and that means like you have maybe like five percent less performance, maybe even like two percent less power performance, and it will run hotter. But it's basically a 480 gigabyte, so it's not, there's no really need to talk about this. Um, yeah, I guess that's all. Yes. Thanks for listening.